My name is Roby D and today we're going to get into cheap flash photography. I'm going to get into some of the things that you need in order to get this started. Maybe you sell items on eBay like clothes or shoes or, or maybe you have some items that you've created yourself and you want to sell it on Etsy. Maybe some jewelry or other small products or you're just a home baker and you say, hey, look, I need better pictures than I'm getting on my iPhone to show off my cookies, my cake. You're going to get good quality shots so the customers can see what you have to offer. Before we get started, you're going to need a couple of things. First of all, you're going to need a flash. It doesn't matter what the flash is. This is a $30 flash I've picked up on Amazon. You're going to need some triggers. These are also some really inexpensive triggers or these. These are the ones I'm actually going to use. I want to make a separate video on these that I just picked up to see how well they work. You're going to need a way to support your flash. I use this Godox S-mount bracket. It's a great bracket. It's under $20. I think it's a really good deal. There's other solutions also. You're going to need a way to diffuse your flash. I recommend an umbrella if you're starting from scratch. This is a very inexpensive way to um, get a nice spread of light all over. It's not as controlled. There's some downfalls to the umbrella, but you can buy two of these for maybe $12 on Amazon. And then it's a light stand to hold all of this equipment. Uh, the light stand is also inexpensive. I would not recommend using this light stand outside. It's so small and flimsy. It's not going to hold up very well outside. But if you're just doing tabletop photography, like we're talking about here, doing small objects with this setup here, this is plenty. The final thing you're going to need is a camera. So you got to make sure that your camera has a hot shoe like this. Um, this allows you to slide a, a, a trigger into it and this will go on the flash side, like so. You send a signal from, let's turn it this way. You're gonna send a signal from your camera to the flash and it communicates and it all fires. Uh, this one here, I'm gonna give a review on. For tabletop photography, it'll do the job, but that will be about all I recommend this one for. The final things you're going to need is a hard surface to put your product on. I suggest using a foam core board that will be your back wall and then a large stimulus piece of paper. You can go to the photo supply store or maybe into a teacher supply and buy a nice thick roll of paper. Or if you have the sticky notes around, you can get these at Office Depot and they've actually worked really well for me. Now let's get into the studio. Let's see how we put it all together. Let's go. All right, now that we're in a studio, let's go ahead and see how we get it set up. So you see we have the off-camera flash. It's going to be set up here. Um, what we're going to do is shoot the umbrella. We have a really simple setup. So today I'm using light picks, trigger, and receiver. The coolest thing about these are they're so small. I picked these up a couple of years ago. They use a 2032 battery. That's the little coin battery. So the battery lasts a very long time. The version 2 actually... Uh, has a rechargeable battery built in which may be cooler but these are neat they're only i think for the set about 50 dollars or so so let's make sure we're popping all right we're good there and let's take a picture all right so now we know that we actually take a picture and the trigger will fire so let's just see where we are the first one so the very first picture i'm not getting any light here um so we need to make a lot of changes right now my flash is very low uh, I'm going to bump this up first. Let's go ahead and bump this up to about almost, yeah, about two from, yeah, let's go three from the top. Let's take a picture. You know, this picture in a lot of flash on one side and I can see the fall off on the other side. Um, right now, my shutter speed is way too slow. I'm picking up all the ambient light. So I'm going to ramp up my shutter speed to 200th of a second. That is the max that this will sync. So let's take another picture. All right, so now I'm not seeing that ambient light as much anymore. So we're good there. Uh, on the bright side, I'm a little bit too bright, but I can live with that. So I'm happy where I am right now, but I wanna make it better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a bunch of changes here. It's at 45 degrees at an angle and 45 degrees to the side of the subject. What I'm gonna do in this situation is actually bring it all the way down here. And let's see what we get. 
Let's see what the difference is. All right, looking good. So now what I wanna do is spread the light out a little bit more. So right now it's hitting just a small portion of the umbrella. So first of all, I'm gonna flip the little flap and then I'm gonna get my umbrella further away. See what we have between those two pictures. So that's, it may be subtle. You're gonna see a little more shadow on the, on the dark side of the pic. Also, you're gonna see that from when it was above on the light side is actually lit a little bit more because the air isn't casting the shadow. We're really good now, but let's make it even better. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Take that picture one more time. Now what we wanna do is we wanna fill in this side of the pic, all right? So let's bring in a bounce. So just find any old poster board. This is a picture I printed previously. I'm gonna put it over here so I can, what's gonna happen is the light's going to bounce coming from the flash. It's gonna hit the back wall here and it's gonna bounce on this white side and then it's gonna fill in the dark side of the pic. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Look at the huge difference there. So putting a white bounce on this side of the pic you see how much of a difference it makes. So when buying, when buying a product, I like to see more than one picture. Actually, I like to see a lot of pictures. So the great thing about this setup is once you get the light right, you can crank through a bunch of pictures without putting in any extra time or effort, getting given customers what they want. So here's a few more of the piggy bank I was able to take without changing anything. In this video, I focus a lot on seamless white because it's the hardest to execute. My goal when shooting the website is for a photo to blend into the background. So here's an example of my wife's website where you can see the photo matches the background perfectly. You can't see where the photo begins or ends. This setup will get you close to that out of the camera, but you'll likely have to do some Photoshop or Lightroom like I did in this last picture here. So the setup is really versatile with the same simple lighting setup. And if you get creative with your backgrounds, you can do something like these. So check these out. Here's a rustic one. And here's one that has a pop of color. Just finding the color that's in the product and matching it to it. And also, here's some food. In a future video, I'm gonna show you how to take one light and combine multiple exposures in Photoshop to get your lighting to the next level. If you know somebody that needs some help with their tabletop photography, go ahead and share this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment field below or hit me up on Instagram at robmd. Until next time, be blessed.